Hello, everyone, and welcome to our apps speed dating webinar. I'm Tori. I will be emceeing today's session, and I am joining you from Wheels Head Office, which is on Gadigal Land in Sydney. We are thrilled to have you all join us for today's event. Um, now, Wheel is the team behind today's event but we could not have done it all without our amazing sponsors. So we'd like to give a big thank you to Visa, Translucent, Fathom, Trace, and Mayday for making today possible. Now, in case you're just joining us today, I'll just give you a quick run through of the house rules. Uh, so we do want today's session to be interactive. So feel free to ask questions. And to do that, we encourage you to use the chat function, which can be found in the bottom um, in your Zoom toolbar, and to use the QA function as well. Um, we'll also be throwing out a few polls as the sessions go on. So after each demo from each of our panelists, we'll be sending out a poll asking whether you'd like to receive more information about our speakers. So if you do think you've found the perfect app match for your business, please do leave your responses in the poll. And now for some introductions. So without further ado, today we are joined by Kat Long, the founder at Trace. We've got Jake McGrain, account exec at Wheel, Jack Thiel, APAC commercial lead at Mayday, and Brian Chen, account exec at Fathom. So today we'll be keeping it interesting and we decided to pull some names out of a hat to determine the order of today's events. Um, so I will be doing that now to determine who is up first. First up, we've got Trace. So that means Kat, you've got four minutes to be giving your demo. I will stop sharing my screen. And I will let you take over. Thank you so much. And uh, I hope you can hear me. I have had some issues with my audio, but hopefully you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you so much for having me, Wheel. Um, it's my absolute pleasure to be able to present Trace to you today. You might have been in my session earlier about why we believe the finance function is the future of reaching that zero and carbon accounting. Think of Trace like zero for carbon reporting. With increased pressure around the world to reduce carbon emissions, the Australian and New Zealand governments have recently introduced regulations mandating large companies to report their carbon, carbon emissions. And while regulations may not impact you or your company directly, they will by implication. If you are in the supply chain of a large company, or if you have Gen Z employees who care about climate, or if you simply have a brand that you want to remain relevant in this climate conscious world, you need to be, to be decarbonizing today and sharing your impact around the world. Luckily, it's not as hard as you might think, and as finance professionals, you already have the skills and data to measure carbon accounting, measure carbon emissions, which is what we call carbon accounting. So today, I just want to give you a quick whistle-stop tour of the Trace platform to hopefully demonstrate how simple it is for you to find out the emissions of your business or your client's business. So here on screen, you have Trace software, and this is our the carbon reporting dashboard for one of our demo clients example. Nice, simple layout and, out and output to show this business's carbon emissions. So what are we looking at here? We can see that this company's footprint is made up of a majority of electricity emissions, followed by business travel, employee commute, purchase goods and services, and waste. Pretty simple uh, and easy analysis. And what does this tell me? Well, it can actually help me identify opportunities to reduce emissions. So if I go here into our reduce dashboard, I can actually start tracking how the business is doing year on year and start creating some forecasts or scenario modeling to understand whether we are on track to reach net zero emissions. I can also use our decarbonization tool to identify what the priority initiatives we should take as a business are so that we can actually materially make a change to our emissions. Here you can see we have a waterfall chart presenting the top five opportunities for reduction. And on the right here, a simple prioritization matrix to help you identify where to focus your time, quick wins or strategic wins, and which initiatives to deprioritize. Underlying this uh, is a huge bank of reduction or decarbonization initiatives, which you can click on and upskill yourself and your team or your clients about how to make material difference to your carbon emissions. Once you're done with that, the great news is you can start to share. 
So TRACE has a prop proprietary bagging system. If you offset your emissions, you can become carbon neutral. If you simply measure and manage, you can have our carbon under management manage. And these badges can be inserted into your email footers, into your website, or onto any marketing collateral using our um, embedded snippet here. We also have in-house reporting tools. Here you can download a simple carbon report, which can be sent as a compliance um, report. So if one of your clients ask about your carbon emissions, or you might like to use our premium function, which is our carbon management report, which is a great storytelling um, storytelling tool to help you tell you the story of your company and your plan towards net zero. Now, how does this actually work? I'm going to very quickly show you the steps towards measuring emissions so that hopefully you can see quite how simple it is. The steps for measuring your emissions all start with your carbon, sorry, your accounting platform. So here you can see the simple steps required by you or your accountant to measure emissions. First, you connect your accounting platform, you define the measurement period, which is likely to be 12 months prior or financial year. You can share the trace survey with your employees to find out about their commuting data. And then the exciting bit is actually mapping your expense data. We won't go into this now, but what this basically allows you to do is pull your P&L from Xero, from QuickBooks, from Myob, and actually map those to our expenses category. Finally, you add any activity data, like your electricity usage, you submit it, and the output comes from Trace and looks just like this. Thank you very much for your time. I think that's time up already, isn't it? Yes. That <laughs> is time. It flies by those four minutes. Thank you so much, Kat. We've got just about a minute left for any Q&A. So if you did have any questions, please pop them in the q and I'll just wait a little bit longer to see if any of those trickle in. We've got one from Natalia. How do you go about sourcing and gathering the data that goes into the software? And how do you ensure that that is complete and accurate? Amazing question. A lot of it comes from your accounting platform, which is by definition complete and accurate because we can pull the pull the data directly from your P&L. It's really your accountant or your finance professional's job to make sure those spend, uh, the spend line items are mapped to our emissions categories. The other data that you might want to collect are things like uh, electricity usage, which will come from utility bills, it might be your travel data, such as number of Uber um, trips you're doing or number of international flights. And all of that data gets input into the Trace platform so that we can calculate your footprint. That's great. Thank you, Kat. We'll just be throwing out a poll now to the audience. So if you would like to hear more from Kat and from Trace, please respond in the poll. Give you a couple of seconds get that poll completed and then we'll be moving swiftly on to our next speaker all right everyone's had a chance to answer the poll yeah i think that's everyone cool you can end the poll now and move on to our next speaker who i'll pick out of our hat next up wheel so I'll be handing over to you, Jake. Exciting Jake, times. Got four minutes. Love it. Let me just chuck my timer on and uh, get in and screen share. So hi, everyone. Um, as a quick introduction to Wheel, we're an Australian spend management platform. So our core offering really is virtual corporate cards and inbuilt expense management. Um, in my four minutes, I really want to highlight three key takeaways for you about how our virtual cards and inbuilt expense management can help overcome a few key challenges businesses commonly face around managing business spend. So what I want to firstly show you is how flexible our virtual cards are compared to traditional bank cards, and also how you can inbuild your expense policy into them as you issue them out. So what I'm going to do is show an example of how I could issue out two cards to some sales team members and in build expense policy with these cards. When I issue the limit out, I can choose daily, weekly, monthly, and one-time limits. So lots of good examples for that. This organization has a limit of $250 budgeted for each sales team member. So I'm assigning out two cards to James and Joseph with an overall limit of $500. You can inbuild your approver 
So Kimberly, the sales manager, is the approval of this budget. I can then do individual limits on this. So in this case, it's 250 each per cardholder. But this can be divided based on how, how the organization chooses to issue it out. Last thing we really want to focus on is making it easy for anyone who you issue a card to, to not only get your receipts, but also do their coding as you go. So what we allow you to do is categorize your chart of accounts so they're easy to understand. And you can choose which categories or chart of accounts that the cardholders see. So for the sales team, it could be entertainment, food and drinks, meal with client, parking. These are the only options that appear on this budget and likely to be correct, unless fixing up by the finance team in the background. In the context of Wheel, that is issuing a card. So with us, we don't need to do ID checks or anything on your staff and you have your choice of limit. And we've also inbuilt the expense policy into these cards that I've issued out. What I wanna show you now is how easy it is for your staff to then use our app to acquit their expenses and where some real value can come from. So this is our app. All they'll do is log in. We're a Visa card that links into Google and Apple Pay for physical payments. And they can also see the card details through our app. They can see their available budget and they would, cannot go over the limit without an approval. So in building cost controls in here too. And best of all, as I say, we wanna make it easy for them to complete their expenses um, within seconds. So there's an immediate reminder after every purchase and all the completing an expense involves will be them capturing a receipt from our app. So we get really good receipt compliance by allowing it to be done right away rather than having to be kept and submitted later. They can do your chart of account coding via simple categories and you can choose which ones they see. We can also inbuild or you can customize this report for any additional dimensions or cost centers you need to capture, all available and completed by your staff in seconds of purchase. But better yet, we can also, we will do the chasing up for you. No need for the finance team to be bagging mums anymore. But even better, you can set it to block their card if they don't get you the data within the time frame you choose one to 14 days, but we suggest three days is a good, good lever. The last thing I just wanna to touch on is how our all-in-one solution can really help you with getting every expense completed without all the, the uh, man hours that normally go into it. So all the data your staff captures is gonna be here in our transaction table within seconds of purchase, receipt, chart of account, GST, everything you need. You can add your workflows to review these and then either sync this data into your accounting software or do it via an export. So in a nutshell, that's how you can use us to uh, manage your cards. 10 seconds to spare. Great timing, Jake. We've got a minute now for Q&A. So if you do have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A function. We've got a couple. We've got... Do Wheel also support subscription expenses, i.e. digital subscriptions? Yep. So we have a specific tool for the uh, managing your subscriptions. So rather than having them all coming off one of the director's cards, you can actually separate them out. I might even jump and show you this visually because a really good one. So what you can do is get a lot greater control over this through our portal. If you want to cancel a subscription, you can just freeze the card through here and it's gonna give you much more visibility than a number of charges coming off the, the card statement every month. Awesome, thanks, um, Jake. Yeah, I see two other questions. So car rental, we can pay through Wheel. We also have physical cards due to launch very soon, but in the meantime, staff members can just put their personal cards down. Um, and yeah, happy to answer any other questions afterwards. <laughs> Awesome. We are very short on time today. So if you do have any more questions, please pop them in the Q&A. And as Jake said, we will get back to you after the session ends. For now, if you'd like to hear more from Wheel, please respond in the poll that's on your screen. Give everyone a couple of seconds just to get their last questions in and to answer the poll before we move on to our second to last speaker for today on a tight schedule. Okay, a couple more seconds for the poll. Right, I think that's all we've got time for. We'll end the poll now. Remember any questions in the Q&A, moving swiftly on to our next speaker, who is going to be Mayday. Jack, you are up, over to you. You've got four minutes. 
Awesome. No worries. Thank you all for uh, your time. Let me just share my screen. Hopefully you can see that there and I'll jump into the app soon. So thanks all for coming. Uh, thanks Bill, for putting this on a uh, great event. So May Day uh, is a month, month end automation platform built for larger zero businesses. Uh, at the moment, we're solving the key needs of multi entity organizations. So as soon as you've got multiple zero organizations, you know that the management of intercompany transactions, intercompany accounts and loans becomes quite difficult and time consuming. So that's where Mayday comes in. This is the product. Uh, we have three key features today, Balancer, Recharger and Brag, all tackling different intercompany multi-entity challenges. So if you're all familiar with the process at the end of the month or even during the month of trying to understand where your intercompany loans and accounts are at, you'll know the pain of putting those into a spreadsheet. So we're logging into multiple zero files identifying the intercompany loan account that I want, logging into another, finding it, and then trying to figure out if these are gonna stay in balance. Now with Mayday, that job's done for you automatically. You can view these loans any day of the month, whenever you need. And you can also flick across to your famous and popular uh, matrix view as well, which I know so many people are recreating manually within their uh, spreadsheets today. When you've got a loan that does fall out of balance, we'll show it to you here in red. We've, we've done the job for you of doing the side-by-side -side account transaction listings. We're matching up all the transactions for you automatically across currency too, so that you can see where you've got a transaction on one side, matching a transaction on the other, and making it really easy for you to identify any one-sided or asymmetrical postings. So as I said, really simple solution to an annoying challenge today. Uh, we work across currencies. We allow you to post your FX adjustments through here, and we can also calculate interest on these loans on a daily balance and allow you to post your interest income and interest expense across entities as well, right from within Mayday. The second product we have within the platform is Recharger. This is for where you want to recharge or on-charge costs or revenues from one entity to one or more other entities in the group. Uh, I won't go into all the detail on how this works today, but it's built around a simple rules engine. So if you're familiar with zero bank rules, this should come quite naturally. Let's say I want to create a new recharge rule and I want to recharge all of my zero subscription costs. I can flag those costs in here by account code and contact. And then below, I can determine how I'd like this cost to be uh, split and recharged. So it could be 100% to one entity, or maybe I want to split that in multiple ways to multiple entities across the group. There's a number of different ways that you can split and recharge costs. So certainly not limited to 50-50. Uh, you can create your own apportionment units here, such as splitting based on headcount or turnover as well. So at the end of the month, you've got your rules set up. You've got any apportionment methods created. All you do is run your calculation. We then do the hard work. We go over every single transaction that's gone through zero for that period for all of your zero organizations. We calculate or we identify first which transactions meet the criteria of your rules. We then calculate the recharges for you. You can review all of those costs and recharges coming through here. And then we prepare for you the postings that are gonna go into zero. So as I can see on the left-hand side here, all of our different inter-entity pairings. So I can see what costs or revenues are gonna be recharged out to the various entities. And I've got full control over whether or not this gets posted as an invoice in a bill or as a journal. Maybe I wanna post it as draft or as authorized. Choose your currency. And then all you do is click that post to zero button. And that's it. that then posts both sides of the recharge. It can update your intercompany account as well if you need it to. So that's Recharger in a nutshell. And then we've got our third product, which is Brag. So Brag is a really simple solution to the annoying problem where you've got a, a bank feed item that relates to another zero organization. So here we've got a little browser extension that then shows within your zero tab, which allows you to match transactions from one zero org to bills or invoices that are sitting in another. If you click continue here, we automatically go off, find that bill in zero, market is paid to the intercompany account and pre-fill everything that you need in this tab here to click OK. So yeah, that's uh, Mayday and that's the suite as it is today. Thank you very much. Excellent timing as well, Jack. Thank you so much. We now have nice. a minute for Q&A. So if you did have any questions for Mayday, please do pop them in the Q&A function. Got one from Cassie. If we have some entities using QuickBooks and some entities using Xero, will this still work with Mayday? So at the moment, it is just for zero businesses. Um, so you'd need all of your relevant entities to be on zero. We have some groups who have the majority on zero. So they use Mayday for those. And then they just have a manual process for the one or two that are on QuickBooks. Uh, but we are looking at a QuickBooks integration in future. So keep an eye out for that. 
Brilliant. And we'll just throw out a poll now. So if you'd like to hear any more from Mayday, please do respond in the poll that should be popping up on your screen very shortly. In the meantime, we have some other questions while that poll is underway. Is there a maximum number of... Oh, Oh, question. sorry, I answered that one. So uh -huh. no, there's no maximum. Uh, you know, as of today, we've got groups up to about 230, 250 entities connected. Um, so for the vast majority of businesses, that's gonna that's gonna cover it. Sorry, Tori, you're on mute. I think you're on mute, Tori. Thank you. All good. <laughs> That is all we've got time for today for May Day. Last but not, not least, we're moving on to our fourth and final speaker, Bryant from Fathom. So Bryant, you've got four minutes. You know the drill. I'll hand over to you. All right. Um, thanks, Jack. Thanks, Tori. Brilliant stuff. Cool. So hi, everyone. My name is Bryant and pleasure to be here today. Cool. And uh, I'm the account exec for Fathom. I help businesses and franchises streamline board reports using visual and simple dashboards as opposed to monochromatic spreadsheets. So here's my email if you want to take it down. But before I introduce you to Fathom, here are three numbers I'd like you to remember in the next couple of seconds. And what they actually mean is, um, according to a global survey on 600 finance executives run by Deloitte US this year, these are actually percentages of preferred time spent on these three key tasks. And the reality is all but quite the opposite, especially for reporting and decision making. So these are staggering numbers. And to visualize things further, here on the next slide, 48% of the time are basically being spent um, to process raw data from source files to create and update reports that sometimes doesn't even make a whole lot of sense. Lots of room for improvement there. Um, but this is where Fathom comes in, to get you from that 48 down to the 3%. So Fathom is a tool um, that uh, we're a financial analysis, analysis, management reporting, and forecasting software that streamlines reporting workflow, provide better and simpler report packs, and add colorful touches to board meetings. And we integrate with uh, the source accounting files that you just saw in the previous slide. Um, but yeah, we primarily deal with accountants and business uh, businesses and franchises. And clients use Fathom to analyze key KPIs, generate visual reports, and also give uh, also generate through a forecast on both the individual entity level and the group level. And now let's let me show you some examples. So this is a SaaS company report um, put together within 30 minutes in Fathom. So what we hear all the time is rows of numbers, spreadsheets that can be overwhelming and hard to interpret, and people want to see reports that tell a story. Um, so because we know different stakeholders have different needs, um, that's why we have these, these visuals to cater to different needs. Starting off with six most important metrics outlined alongside some notes to management, uh, because stakeholders love to see key KPIs and trends in the early days of the reports. And perhaps a certain director asked some questions on total revenue. You know, can you give me some drill down, which is exactly what I have on the next page here. You know, some key metrics at the top, some graphs on costs as well as expense revenue ratio, as well as a revenue mix and a trend chart at the bottom. So a very comprehensive revenue summary page over here. And at this point, if someone asks you again on cash flow, you know, what about cash flow? So in Fathom, you can easily generate a cash flow chart over time and put in all the relevant key metrics as well as describe it over time. Um, and you know, if the board is interested in any other KPIs, this is where you can have um, a summary table that puts in everything all at once. And you, know, you can easily point out any cause for concern in each of these category and even celebrate some milestones um, by cracking the beer on Friday afternoon. But yeah, for business owners, this is a cool analysis, um, a break-even analysis on the business health, as well as at the bottom, a very visual cash flow movement uh, waterfall chart that outlines all of the cash movements within the period. 
And last but not least, the classic PL table um, with some visuals on the variances to help interpretation. To end off, everyone likes some forecasts. So in Fathom, you can actually build out a nice forecast and to make some decisions on not just the timing, but you can also see the impact of your choices um, if you follow the decisions promptly. And if I just jump back to my slides, um, that's just something I want to end off with. A quote by Dimitri from Helston and Co. Um, yeah, and that's it for me. Thank you so much, Brian. Our final speaker for today. We have one minute left for a Q&A with Fathom. So if you do have any questions, please pop them in the Q&A function. We do have one from Andrea who says, for Fathom forecasts, how do you enter salaries? Can you do mm -hmm. this by employee? Um, so yeah, in the Fathom forecast, you can actually, you can enter the salaries manually. Um, we have something called a micro forecast where you basically create the entire new hire and that is when you can enter the salary by month, by a grid, but we also have value rules where you can determine what goes into the calculation of the salary. So things like employee hours, employee rates, um, you can come up with a formula to calculate the salary. So it's a bunch of different methods that you can use um, to calculate the salaries in Fathom. Great, thank you. And we will throw out the Fathom poll now. So if you would like to hear more from Fathom, please respond in the poll. In the meantime, we'll answer just one more question. We've got one from Glenda. Can Fathom report on individual business units as well as combined accounts? Yeah, good, great question, Glenda. Um, so Fathom, yes, yes, we can. You can report on individual businesses, even tracking categories in zero. But yeah, you can also report on combined um, consolidated groups as well on the on the group level in Fathom. Great. Thank you, Bryant. We will end the Fathom poll and we will quickly throw out the Mayday poll because we forgot to throw that one out earlier. So if you'd like to hear more from Mayday, please respond to this poll. And any more questions you have, please make sure before we go today that you put them in the Q&A function so that we can get back to them after this session. But that is just about all we have time for today. So thank you so much to everyone for their stellar demos today. And thanks also to everyone watching. We really hope you enjoyed today's speed dating session and you got some exciting matches out of today. Um, next up, we do have two great sessions for you at 2 p.m. Uh, we've got the ATO Insights session as well as the new ways to optimize processes session with visa so two great options for you there um, we hope to see you there thank you so much again bye everyone